of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Lifting up verse number 12 again, it says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Amen. I want to talk for a little while from the subject. Take heed to the one. Take heed to the morning. Let's so all say amen. amen. Now, our text this morning, the writer of Hebrews is giving one of four warnings that are found in this book. And this particular warning is that of unbelief. And before we get deep into the passage, you do know that it is a sin not to believe. You do know that. Don't you? And the writer begins this verse by saying, in verse number 20, take heed. Or, Listen or pay attention. 
Right. And this letter to whom this, the audience is uncertain, it is not clear exactly who the writer of Hebrews wrote the letter to, because there are no specific recipients named. But we can assert that it was written to a certain group of believers because it says in verse 12, take heed, brethren. And the importance of this warning, brothers and sisters, is because there are those who claim to be genuine believers. Those who claim to have been born again, blood bought, Holy Ghost filled, God's children. But the Bible lets us know that there are those who claim Christianity, claim to be believers, but they have not changed in their hearts. And those who claim to be genuine believers have a tendency to start to turn away from God <coughs> over time. Sometimes tragedy will cause someone to question if God truly loves them. All right. But many times when you go through a bad situation, you start to question if God is so good, why did he allow this to happen to me? There are times that we feel that since I've given my life to the Lord, I shouldn't have to deal with any more heartache and pain. Well, to the contrary, when you give life to the Lord, that's really when the battle stops. But those of us that have been out there, we know when, when we were out there, it really wasn't much of a challenge. We did our thing and we did it, we enjoyed it. But when we started, our hearts started to turn towards the Lord. When we finally gave our life to Him, that's when we had to wrestle All right. between doing what was right and doing what was wrong. Right. And there are those who lose the battle, brothers and sisters, of choosing right over wrong. There are times where there are those who start out on this journey who will throw in the towel. There are those who will will say that this Christianity thing just didn't work out for me. There are those that will have given Christ a try. It didn't seem like anything worked in their faith. So they chose to leave and try some other God. And that, brothers and sisters, is called apostasy. All right. And the definition of the word apostasy is the state of having rejected your religious belief, often in favor of opposing beliefs or causes. And one of the signs, brothers and sisters, prior to the return of Christ, according to 2 Thessalonians, is that there will be a great falling away from the faith. And some of us, if we just think back over our lives and think about people we come in contact with in our circle. There are many who have started out on this journey. They were faithful in church attendance. All right. But then the world got too enticing. There are those who the roots were not so deep. Oh, and what the world offered seem to be more important to the heart than what Christ offered. And the Bible declares that before the return of Jesus, there will be those who have started out claiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. All right. But before they make it to that final day, they turn and walk away. And it's hard, sometimes it's hard for us to believe that. But there have been ministers who have preached Jesus, yeah. who have turned, All right. 
and walked away. They have been deacons who have prayed Jesus, who have turned and walked away. There have been those who served faithfully in auxiliaries on committees who attended service on every Sunday that have turned and walked away. Jesus said that, that the, let, let the, the wheat and the tab grow together. So if Jesus would say to let the wheat and the tab grow together, then evidently there are some within the body of Christ that are not genuine. He said that there will be wolves among sheep. So that suggests to me that there are those within the body of Christ that are not genuine. And the warning, brothers and sisters, is that we must guard our hearts to make sure that we are, are steadfast in our belief that Christ is Lord. All right. It's easy to shout when everything's going your way. But how is your praise when the money starts to look funny? How is your praise when your health begins to decline? How well do you love the Lord when that marriage didn't work out the way you thought it would have? How how is your praise when you prayed and asked the Lord to save Big Mama, but she passed on anyhow? Yeah. <laughs> there are times when we will look to God and wonder if He truly is real. Amen. And there are times when some of the same individuals who have attended service with you sat on the pew next to you that when life gets difficult, they'll throw in the tap. Amen. <coughs> away from the Lord. And one who gives in to apostasy, the verb would be apostatize, is one who turns away from God, totally rejecting the truth of the gospel. Now, this passage, we're not talking about your average pagan or unbeliever. This passage is addressing those <coughs> who started out on the journey, yeah. but who have since then turned away and walked away from God. All right. Now somebody's probably asking the question, how can one who believed just simply wake up one day and choose not to? Right. Well, I will attempt to answer that through the latter part of this message. You see, this is a real problem that must be addressed. Let me give you just a hypothetical example. For those of us that, uh, if there's a numbers guy in the room, people who look at him, who, uh, who analyze numbers, watch this. If, if let's say 90% of the church, whatever the number is, whether it's 50 of us, 100 of us, if 90% of the church was faithful to God until their until their very last breath, if 90% of the church were with Christ all the way until they took their last breath, then that would leave 10% that were not. If 90%, now, just, just kind of using the, the grading system from school, uh, I would always try to shoot for a 90, you know. I wasn't the best student in class, but if I could get a 90%, I was happy. Yes. Amen. Amen. So when you look at 90%, 90% seems pretty good. If we were being analytical and looking at the numbers, if 90% of the church was, was all the way for Christ to their very last breath, you might look and say, well, that's a good church. 90% of the people hung in there. But if that be so, then there's 10% that fell away. And the fact of the matter is, that according to the word of God, there are those prior to the return of Christ that will turn and walk away. And what the scripture is telling us in verse number 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you 
and evil heart of unbelief. Notice what it says after that, and departed from the living God. Now, brothers and sisters, this is why this is so important. Because on the outside, you can show anything. Amen. Amen. You can appear to be whatever you want to be. But God knows the heart. And you know your heart. And the fact that if your heart is not truly turned towards the Lord, if there's any doubt in your heart, if there's any unbelief in your heart, then you are subject to drifting away because you're not totally convinced that Christ is the way. Amen. Because if you're not totally convinced that Jesus is the master, then when someone else introduces you another God, solicits you another Christ, you'll be willing to listen because your heart is not sold out for Jesus. All right. That is why you find people leaving one religion and going to another. Because their hearts were not sold out for the Lord in the first place. Listen, I know it gets tough out here. But you don't need to try to offer me anything else. Amen. As hard as it may get, I'm riding with Jesus. Amen. All right, all right. And there are those that will, that will try and infiltrate the church. False prophets, false teachers. That will try to draw you out. And tell you, you ought to try this over here. Why do you serve a God you haven't seen? Uh, how do you pray to, to a, a blue-eyed Jesus? Uh, why would you pray and give your money and give all of this to a God that don't exist? That they will solicit you on these things. And if you are not rooted and grounded in the word of God, you will feed off junk food and find yourself drifting away from God. Bible says that in the last day that there will be a falling away from the faith. Brothers and sisters, this is a reality. This is not something that we should that we should take lightly because sin will attack all of us. All of us, everybody knew. All right. We're going through something. Amen. Amen. Going through some type of storm. All of us. Deal with temptation. The most faithful husband is still tempted. Amen. The most faithful wife is still tempted. Amen. The most obedient child is still tempted. Amen. This is just a reality. And we all deal with this. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we will always be in this battle with sin. And the flesh is never satisfied. But it's through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit in us, that keeps that flesh, that, that, that selfish side of us, it keeps it suppressed. It's the Holy Spirit that keeps us from drifting off into just indulging in those things which we desire. And it doesn't make you, watch this now, you're not any less of a Christian because you're not perfect. Amen. Now, as a believer, there are some things that you ought to have enough God in you to resist. Yeah. But we will slip. Right. But thanks be to God that we can go to Him and ask Him for forgiveness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I was listening to the choir sing. And I believe I heard Him say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah. Please forgive me. Yeah, Lord. Why do we sing that? Because we do serve a God of another chance. Amen. Now, let's not take his kindness for granted. I believe it was Paul that said in the sixth chapter of Romans, should we continue in sin so that grace may abide? God forbid. In other words, since I'm already in good standing with God, I can just do what I want. And then I just run back to him and ask him for forgiveness. No, that's not how it works. You see, a changed heart should display a different behavior. People shouldn't look at you and see you living the same way you did in the world once you claim to be a child of God. Christ says that you, you, ought, you ought to be able to, 
your, your fruit ought to be evident. We ought to be able to, people ought to see the Christ in us. We're not perfect by any means. But we, we ought to have a, a, an image of Christ in our daily walk. And the more we grow in grace, the more like Christ we ought to become. And the reason, brothers and sisters, verse 12 is so important. It says, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. And unbelief is sin. And if we have sin in our hearts, brothers and sisters, if we are, if we are willfully living a sinful lifestyle, that's a sign that we are drifting away. Because the more we sin, the easier it is to sin. Right. Right. See, once upon a time, when we had an evil thought, we'd go before God and ask for forgiveness. But the more we get away from repentance and continue to willfully sin, meaning we, we choose to do, the easier it becomes. It gets to a point where it doesn't even convict you. You can drift so far away from God that you can operate in the flesh and feel no regard at all that we are sinning before God. And the Bible is saying, take heed, brother, lest there be in any of you unbelief in your heart. It will cause you to continue in sin it will make it easier to sin and cause you to drift further and further away from God. Right. Habitual sinning will lead to a hardened heart. Mm -hmm. Apostasy is falling away because of unbelief. And if one is a genuine believer, they won't find themselves indulging in sin all the time. Right. Yes, we will sin. Yes, we will find ourselves out of character every now and then. But one who has truly been redeemed will not allow themselves to live in a constant sinful state. And a sign, one sign of falling away from the Lord is when we become uninterested in God. Now, I've been messed with you now. January 2014, third Sunday, if the Lord is so kind, we will enter into five years, five years since I've served here. And since I've been here, there are those who've never been to Bible study, those who've never been to Sunday school, those who've never been to prayer meeting. In four years, and 10 months of no Bible study, no Sunday school, no prayer meeting, be very careful because you may find yourself drifting away from God. You cannot, you cannot grow spiritually if you are not under the teaching of God's gospel. You cannot do it. If for those of us in administration, school administration, you have a student that doesn't come to school for three months, it's a good chance he's not going to pass. Good chance. You miss six months. It's a good chance you're going to fail. Four and a half years of no Bible study. Four and a half years of no prayer meeting. Four and a half years of no Sunday school. How are you going to grow spiritually if we do not spend any time in the Word of God? See, sometimes the church needs to be called out. Amen. Because of the simple fact that doing things the way we've always done it and being comfortable with it, if we're not careful, we'll go through the motions of being externally attached to the church. Externally attached to the church, externally attached to the church without having an internal change based on our belief in the master. Well, our fire may simmer down somewhere. 
We go through storms in life. We have things that are uncomfortable, unpleasant, unforeseen situations we deal with. But for those that are truly redeemed, those that have been rooted in the word of God, come what may, we are still going to keep our eyes on Jesus and press our way through the storm. Now some, some feel like that this is the type of uh, uh, the preacher calling you out. Well, that's true, but there's a reason why. Because if I didn't love you, if God didn't love you, why? Just go on and do your own thing. Right, right. Go on and do whatever you want to do. But because God loves us so much, we've got to be reminded, listen, even though you might have been doing your own thing, and you may have been doing it for a long time, Christ is still here yes, and wanting you to come back to him. Amen. That is why this passage is in the text. It says, take heed. In other words, pay attention. Brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Notice what it says in verse 13. But exhort one another daily. Why it's called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. When you look at verse 13, that says, exhort one another. In a, that is what the what cross is doing right now. Right. Exhorting you. To, to get back on the right track. Because according to the latter part of verse 13, that lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Through, through the deceitfulness of sin. See, somebody don't, doesn't see a problem with missing service. <laughs> somebody don't have a problem with not coming to Sunday school. They don't see anything wrong with it. But the scripture says through the deceitfulness of sin. Because if you look over to Hebrews 10 and 25, it says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves, as some will do in the last day, as we see the day approaching. See, Satan will trick you into thinking, No, you ain't got to go all the time. Yeah, all the time? <laughs> Satan will tell you, You don't need to go to church every Sunday. Yeah, every Sunday. You know, go on one Sunday, get up here, and hold you, you know, do your thing, come Sunday, come on back. Bible study, well, you don't really need to go to Bible study. They talk about the same thing on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Pray, man, you pray it all. <laughs> Satan is crafty. <laughs> and if one, if you miss one Sunday, yeah. y'all already know where I'm going. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So yeah, you, you might get, it. You might feel uncomfortable. Ah, yeah, I missed one Sunday, but then you missed two. It's a good game. Nice weather. Oh, yeah. And then you missed three Sundays. Got to wash the car. All right, all right. Hit the yard with the weed eater. That's three Sundays. Next Sunday, somebody having a barbecue. Four Sundays. Next Sunday, you don't feel well. Right. Five Sundays. It's supposed to rain six Sundays. Before you know it, you have missed two, three months of service. That's right. That's right. Because it gets easier That's right. yeah, man. once you miss a few. Amen. Amen. But no sooner than a storm comes, yeah. we run to Christ yeah. when we're in the midst of a storm. But thanks be to God. That if it takes a storm yes. to get you back to him, yes. that he is so happy yes. to receive you when you come. Yes. That's why the church, somebody say the church. Yes. The church ought to be in a position to receive the one that comes back right. Yes. See, there are times where instead of embracing the the prodigal son that returns, we want to ask him where you've been. We have not always done everything the way we should. So rather than to ask a person where they've been, thank God that they're here. That's how Christ would do it. Christ, if you examine the Gospels, Jesus never rejected anyone. People with leprosy. The blind, the lame, those that were poor and considered outcasts, those are the ones Jesus received. So church, don't you get holier than Christ. 
Whoever comes, no matter how long they've been out, you thank God that they come, and prayerfully they're coming for the right reason. And the reason that this is so important, because Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 21, he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. There have always been, and there always will be, those that serve Christ with their lips only. That's why, brothers and sisters, we must take heed to the warning. Coming to church won't get you to heaven. You got to have a heart for God. The plan of salvation is simple. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Christ died and God rose from the dead on the third day, the Bible said, Thy shall be saved. And that is what we have got to have in our hearts. Young people, you're not going to be saved because you were raised in a Christian home. Salvation is not yours because mom and dad were saved. You're not going to be saved just because you came to church, raised in church, and you feel like you're all right just because you just kept coming. No, you got to give your life to him. He hung, bled, and died and rose on the third day for our sins. He has already paid the price for us. And the Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. So it doesn't matter how far out there you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. If you come to Christ just like you are, he'll receive you. He'll clean you up. He, he's already paid the debt on Calvary's cross. So only thing required for us is to accept him as Lord. I wonder if there's anybody in here who, who, who God had to reach way down to pick him up. A few more y'all need to say amen. He had to reach way down to get you. I know that there's somebody in here who, who knows that you were way out there. And the Lord had to, 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 to do a work in your heart in order for you to come to him. Somebody the Lord brought off of drugs and alcohol. Somebody the Lord brought from the street gang. Somebody the Lord brought from prostitution. He brought somebody from gang banging. He, the Lord had to reach way down and brought you back to himself. And today is the day of salvation. If you don't know Christ due to the pardon of your sin, you don't have to put it off another day. You don't have to try to clean yourself up because Christ already did it when he died on an old rugged cross. He fixed everything up when he rose from the grave on the third day morning. Now he's seated at the right hand of the Father, one day to return to receive the church. And it doesn't matter who you are, and it doesn't matter what you've done. All you have to do is confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. That Christ died, and on the third day morning, he rose with all power in the hand. And according to the scripture, if you believe that, the Bible declares, Thy shall be saved. So don't put off until tomorrow what you need to do right now. Watch this. Let me take another approach to it. You may have been in church all your life and never missed a service. But according to Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 12, it's possible for you to have been faithful in attending service and truly never giving him your heart. So don't worry about who's going to be shocked to see you get up. If you need the Lord today, you need to give your life to him because your soul is at stake. Watch this. Here's another thing I want to leave 
with you. Just because people don't believe the truth does not make it a lie. So whether people believe it or not, Jesus is the way. There is no other God. There is no other way to heaven. No man comes to the Father except by him. And if you need salvation today, you should give your life to the Lord right now. Because he paid the price on the cross. And whosoever will, let him come. Somebody ought to give him praise today. If you've been saved, you ought to have a praise in your spirit. Because the Lord died. He paid the sin price. We were on our way to a devil's head. But the Lord saw fit to be obedient to the will of the Father. Even unto the death on the cross. Because he knew you and I would need a Savior. If you're here this morning. Listen, stop trying to rationalize this thing. Stop trying to be so concerned about what people are going to think. Stop worrying about what people are going to say. You know the feeling that you have on the inside. You might be able to ignore the pastor. And if I'm not your pastor, you may be able to ignore the preacher. But if there's one thing you cannot ignore, that's that still voice speaking to you in your heart. And if you're here right now, as we're standing all over the building, if you feel the Spirit of God speaking to your heart, don't you put it off another day. You can come right now.